Hi, my name is Karen Mead. I'm a clinical psychologist and I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking to you about managing anxiety. And at the moment, many, many people have been feeling very, very anxious about the, the coronavirus pandemic. But I know in particular, many of those people who are feeling it the most are those that have pre-existing respiratory conditions. So it's really important, first of all, to acknowledge that that is a really difficult position to be in when perhaps you're receiving letters and information saying that you may be in, in a category of people that might be more vulnerable to this illness. When we feel like our health and our well-being is under threat, we have a, a system in our, in our brain called the fight and flight system, which is activated. And, and this system is really important to help protect us and mobilize our resources to cope with the threat that's in front of us. So we have an alarm that rings in our brain and it fires off a whole strain of different responses in our brain and in our body. But one of the key things that happens when that alarm is activated is we have a huge release of these chemicals called epinephrine and norepinephrine, which most of us would know of as adrenaline. And that floods through our body and creates some really obvious and powerful changes in our body, like an increase in our heart rate, changes in our breathing. We begin to sweat. We may begin to feel a bit hot and clammy and shake because of the adrenaline. And our thinking become, can become really quick and really rapid and difficult to kind of track. A quick way and a powerful way of trying to calm that alarm system down is actually slowing and becoming more at ease with your breath. So you may find it helpful to, to put a hand on your chest or some people find it helpful to put their hands just at the top of their tummy underneath their rib cage. But using our hands as a way of kind of focusing our attention and bringing our breath in and feeling the movement of our hands as we just allow the breath to come naturally and slowly in and out of our body. So breathing in and bringing out awareness to the movement underneath our hands. And as we exhale, feeling our hands drop down and release. So for many people who have respiratory conditions though, they can feel bringing the attention to actually their lungs can be a, bit, a little bit uncomfortable or anxiety provoking. So another really helpful tip can be focusing your attention, perhaps not instead on your lungs, but actually on your nostrils and feeling the, the coolness of the air as you breathe in. And then the warmth of the air as you breathe out. So rather than using your lungs and your respiratory sort of system as the anchor, we're using your nostrils instead and using the temperature, the awareness of the temperature as the anchor. If neither of those are particularly your cup of tea or feel, feel right for you, another really powerful way of helping to calm the alarm system down is to bring our attention, our awareness and focus it onto something different. So that can involve closing your eyes or letting your gaze drop and then just bring your attention to what you can hear in the room around you. That may be the sounds in the immediate vicinity, it may be the sounds of your breath, your tummy rumbling, um, the house settling, or it may be the sounds that you can then hear outside of your immediate surrounds, so what you can hear in the world around. It might be the sounds of cars going past, birds chirping, people talking in the next room. So we've got becoming aware, and we've got anchoring and slowing our breath, or bringing our focus onto something. So once we've got that alarm system calmed down, it's really important that we try and avoid having it reactivated again unnecessarily so, because then of course we'll just start to feel our anxiety creep up again and again. So there's certain things that you can do to kind of avoid that. One of the first things is to try and limit your exposure to news and other sources of, of media. Unfortunately, much of the content and much of the information we're given is, is almost designed at times to be really powerful, to grab our attention and to activate that, that stress response system. That's not necessarily healthy or helpful if we're constantly exposed to it. So where possible, just limit your contact with 
with the news and with media to perhaps just one news bulletin or one update a day. So choose the one that you feel is most reputable, most reliable, that you like the most and perhaps just stick to that one. It's also useful to try and avoid putting stimulants into our body or things that are going to activate that alarm and adrenaline system again. So avoiding and limiting the amount of caffeine that we put into our body, whilst might, it might sound like a small thing, can be really helpful if you're already feeling stressed and anxious. So for many of us, having a cup of tea or a cup of coffee can be a, a kind of relaxing thing. But when you're feeling quite anxious and on, on, on edge, it can actually be almost like adding fuel to the fire. So where possible, perhaps consider switching to decaf. So if you're having a particularly tough day, you, you make yourself a cup of decaf rather than, than full strength. Alcohol and other substances that slow our thinking or reduce our ability to process and be aware of what's going on can also cause difficulties with our ability to process and manage our emotions. Um, keep it to a manageable level and if you're already feeling perhaps low or perhaps anxious, maybe steer clear of the alcohol for something else. It's really, really useful to focus on instead of, of the things that's not, not within our control at the moment, but focusing on those things that are within our control. So that might be things like making sure you take your medication and your medicines in the same way that you always would. Don't let that slide because your medicines are going to be the things that can be really helpful to stop you becoming unwell. If you have daily physio or breathing exercises that you would normally be encouraged to do, keep doing those things. They're the things that can help you and your body and your breathing system to stay as healthy as possible. Keep eating as healthy a diet as possible. What we don't want is to be piling in lots of fat and lots of sugar and then starting to add weight gain into the mix. We know that when we have difficulties with our weight, that can impact negatively on our mood, how we feel about ourselves, but it can also make breathing a little bit more tricky and more uncomfortable. So trying to keep a nice healthy weight and maintain a healthy diet is really, really important. And again, it's something that you can control. Keeping um, to all those basic things that the, the government is telling us to do. So you can control your ability to wash your hands and you can control your ability to maintain a safe social distance from people. But again, you know, that's what, make sure you keep up the social connection with phone and video. And that's a good way to help keep yourself as calm as possible and as psychologically fit and well to get through COVID. Thank you.